Hello everyone, it's Dylan from Yu-Gi-Oh! Everything, and welcome back to another Yu-Gi-Oh! Reign summary discussion video. We have some new summaries, and before we get into it, I do want to say these contain major spoilers. We have the first two episodes for Season 3, those summaries we have the 102 summary as well, and we have the title for Episode 105. So if you do not want to know how Season 2 is going to conclude in terms of the Bowman Playmaker results, and if you do not want to know any anything about season three, at least in the beginning of season three, definitely get off this video now. Major spoilers ahead. But yeah, that being said, we did get our first taste of season three this morning. Remember, opening three is starting on episode 103, in case you forgot, May 22nd. So we are going to get right into it. Uh, again, if you do not want spoilers, last chance to click off. Three, two, one. Here we go. Major thank you to DMC for translating as always, we also have the 102 cast that I'm going to go over very quickly before we get into 103 and 104. So here is the episode 102 summary, Entrusted Wishes. I destroys a part of the neuron link and enters Bowman's program. There, he discovers the five Ignises that were absorbed. After escaping from Bowman's program, I entrust his, as well as the other Ignises, final hopes and wishes to Playmaker. And now, the battle between Bowman and Playmaker enters its final phase. The future of mankind and AI all depend on this battle. So that's pretty cool. Here is the cast. Yusaku, I, Kusanagi, Flame, Aqua, Lightning, Bowman, Faust, Gnome, Robopi, and Extras. I guess this means that Faust, Gnome, and maybe Vyra, even though she's not speaking, will actually survive all of this. I thought they were going to somehow kind of be killed off when they destroy the Neuron Link in next episode in the 101 summary. Akira and Ghost Girl, nowhere to be found, probably because they are going to get... I mean, they're in Link Vrains, so they were always in way more danger than the three lieutenants, and I imagine they are going to probably legitimately sacrifice themselves, sacrifice their consciousness to stop the Neuron Link. We know Bowman starts repairing it in 101. I think it's interesting that then I has to destroy it yet again. This Neuron Link really proving to be an, a huge menace and a huge nuisance to Playmaker in this duel. What I think is very interesting about the cast list is we have Flame, we have Aqua, we even have Lightning, but we don't have Windy. And I'm very surprised that Windy is not speaking because Lightning is speaking. I would have figured they'd be a package deal. Then again, Windy's program was kind of rewritten by Lightning, so I wonder if maybe he's unconscious or there was some sort of negative effects because of that, and he's not speaking for that reason. I don't know what Lightning is going to say in this episode. I hope it's something along the lines of, you failed. I, you're not going to be able to defeat Playmaker. We won, me and Bowman win. I think it's actually really exciting that Lightning is speaking. I actually really do like that because Lightning, once again, can taunt and he's just a great speaker. At least I think he's a great speaker. So I'm excited to see what he has to say. Now we are going to go right into 103 and 104. And the main reason for that is it does spoil who is going to win, even though it's Yu-Gi-Oh!, I know precedents are made to be broken. I like to say that all the time. So I liked to think that there was a slight chance that Bowman would win because I think it would be cool if they ended a season of Yu-Gi-Oh with the protagonist not winning. But it always it always happens, whether it's the protagonist or the rival because Arc 5 did the rival to end the Synchro arc. The main villain is always defeated or the main villain of that arc, at least, always seems to be defeated. So here we go, 103 and 104. And I will say 102 is being animated by No Gilbo. So 102 should be a beautiful episode. He's probably the best animator that the team has. So at least they saved him. Uh, save your best for last. That's an old phrase. And it looks like that's what they did in this sense. So let's go into 103. The first episode of Season 3, heading off to the end. After his life and death battle with Bowman, Playmaker was able to free the consciousness of his allies. However, I, who has used up all of his power during the battle, did not come back to Playmaker. The Ignises absorbed by Bowman did not come back either. So, we figured, death in Yu-Gi-Oh! is very... Very loose. Normally when we see death, we don't see permanent deaths, and there's usually a way to get revivals. Now, that being said, there usually are a few perma-deaths 
in every Yu-Gi-Oh! series. I predicted Bowman, I predicted Haru, and I even predicted Lightning would all be permadeaths. Although I don't think that Lightning, if the other Ignis are going to come back, there's a very strong chance that Lightning will come back as well. And Lightning still might play an antagonist role down the stretch, which would be really awesome. But I do believe that Bowman and Haru probably are going to be done after this season. This summary does tell us that Playmaker either defeats Bowman, or he gets Bowman to surrender, or Bowman wins, but Bowman still somehow gets destroyed. It it basically tells us that unless they're going to do some crazy twist, Playmaker is going to defeat Bowman, and he is going to free Blue Maiden. He's going to free probably Ghost Girl and Akira, Revolver, Soulburner, Spectre, the Kusanagis. So Playmaker is going to save the day, as we all kind of expected. Uh, 103 probably is going to be a bit of a recap episode. I don't want to say that. I know recap is kind of the forbidden word when it comes to Yu-Gi-Oh! Brands, but it just kind of has... When the season ends, that's usually, I feel like, what they do. I know with 47, they didn't really do it, but I feel like season three is probably going to start off a bit slow and ease us all into the, the new season and the new life and everything. But 104 is where things get really interesting. Claim of responsibility. Thanks to the efforts of Playmaker and his allies, Den City is now at peace again. Meanwhile... I and Robopi sneak onto a ship owned by Soul Technologies. I attempts to initiate contact with Soul's top executive queen. Just what is I's motive? That is being scripted by our main scripter, Yoshida Shin, our main writer. And then episode 105, we do not have the summary for. We probably will not have the summary for 105 for a few weeks. And the title for that episode is called Counter Attack. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how Season 3 is going to get kicked off with everyone returning except the Ignis. The Ignis are not coming back, although it's kind of strange because 103 says the Ignis are gone, and then 104, I is around, so where there doesn't really seem to make, there doesn't seem to be a lot of sense there unless, and here's the big unless, Robopi is actually going to be decently important as we've all I don't know if we've all jokingly speculated or we've all actually speculated that she would have more of a role going forward. Because remember, I gave her some sort of program before they went into Mirror Link Vrains. And I wonder if that program was his data or was maybe like a respawn point for him where if something happened in his duel against Bowman, which clearly something does happen to him, he's able to go into Robopi. He's able to travel within Robopi and almost make Robopi like a vessel for him because it's not just I sneaking onto the ship. It's I and Robopi, and most likely I is not going to be his own person, and he will be within Robopi because otherwise I feel like there's no reason for him to bring Robopi on a dangerous trip like this. And if they all disappeared and I doesn't come back to Playmaker, it's probably because he's stuck within Robopi because something bad happened to him where he lost the power to respawn in his own form. So that's really interesting. And I I don't know why he would be going to Queen unless it has to do with maybe Earth because we know that Queen was responsible for destroying Earth. I mean, we know that Soltech is responsible for the Cybers world, or for utilizing the Cybers world, and even going so far as to wanting to reestablish the Cybers world. And so I wonder if I is going to try to reach out to Queen in an effort to bring back the Ignis, to recreate the Cybers world, to strike some sort of deal. I'm not too sure. I- I'm very hesitant to say that this confirms Soul Technologies will be at the forefront for the entirety of the season. Although it's definitely a good sign that Queen is mentioned in the second summary of the season, that Soul Tech is mentioned in the second summary of the season, that they are expanding the property of Soul Technologies. It's not just the building of Soul Tech. Now Soul Tech has a ship that's going to be a new setting for a scene or a new setting for uh, interactions. Another really interesting thing from these summaries, Soul's top executive, Queen, that basically confirms that there is or there is no longer a king chess piece. We have been wondering since we saw Rook, since we saw Knight, and since we saw Bishop, if there was a pawn, if there was a queen, and if there was a king. We get season two, we get a character named Queen, boom, there's your queen chess piece. Time passes, and Soltech kind of, you know, fades away, fades out of relevancy these last 20, 30 episodes. 
and we just wonder if there's going to be a king chess piece or if queen really is the leader of Soltek. This summary, if you want to believe this summary, does seem to confirm that queen is at the top. She is the number one executive. That being said, there might have been a king chess piece. I love the idea of maybe Dr. Kogami, Revolver's father, being the king chess piece, the board having a meeting at some point, Queen using that as maybe an opportunity to throw out the king so that she can become the new leader. I think that would make her very callous. I think that would make her very opportunistic and, and antagonistic. And I would love if they do go that route, but maybe there was never a king chess piece and Queen was always going to be the top leader. Either way, it's definitely a good sign for those of us that want to see more of Soul Technologies, that want to see more of Queen, because 104 summary very easily could have been a random mystery group starts to wreak havoc in Den City, and all of a sudden, yeah, here we go again, more time travelers, more interdimensional war. No, there's nothing like that. It's Queen, it's Soul Tech, it's what we're familiar with already, so that is definitely a really good sign in my eyes, but it's not enough of a sign for me to say that Queen and Soul Tech are 100% going to be the main antagonists of this show going forward, because 104, what we might see is Queen and I strike up a deal, and then in 105, a new enemy shows themselves, or maybe Lightning gets revived in episode 107, and he becomes once again the main antagonist and starts to build some sort of cybers army or something along those lines. So we will just have to wait and see, more importantly, how 104 plays out, the context of what this meeting is going to be about, uh, what I's new motives are. I have a feeling it does have to do with the cybers world and reviving his friends and the other Ignis, and I'm interested to see Owie Zizen's reaction to the Ignis being gone. So, more importantly, of course, Soulburner's reaction to Flame being gone. A Spectre, I, I mean, really the only one that I'm very interested in is Soulburner. Uh, Kusanagi and Jin will be reunited most likely. Maybe we'll get some Miyu early on. Season 3 will definitely be really exciting. But guys, you let me know all your thoughts on these new summaries for Yu-Gi-Oh! Brains. Let me know things you want to see in Season 3. Let me know any predictions you have going forward and any thoughts you have regarding Episodes 102, 103, 104, and 105. Thank you all so much for watching. A special thank you to my Platinum Tier Patrons, Alexa Baker, Glenn McCookin, Jorge Carrillo, James Rose, Samuel Stark, Thomas Adderley, Horace May, Goosey Q, and Vincent Vanderveen, and to my Diamond Tier Patron, Jesse Wood, and to my Egyptian God tier patrons, Sin Cloud and Chris Swan. A huge thank you to everyone who supports me on Patreon, and a huge thank you to everyone who just watches my videos, because without you guys, I would not be able to do this. I will talk to you all down below. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have an amazing day.